its core, If You Could Hear These Walls, is about engaging communities through music composition and murals. Composers are being asked to create music not only for a mural, but they're also taking this community partner's objective, which is to engage a community through composition. And in order to engage the community, they'll bring them into their composition process or show them a certain style or into another composer's composition process. And so we have a number of composers who are conducting workshops on a certain style of music or their own music, and that can happen through private lessons also. The mission of the Philadelphia Mural Arts Program is to provide art with every citizen of the city of Philadelphia and to provide access to opportunities in the arts to adults, vulnerable adults, people returning from prison, people in the behavioral health system, and to young people. And I think it's really important because I think in many ways our program is about beauty and inspiration, but also very seriously it is about equity and access and transformation. The collaboration with the American Composers Forum came out of the blue in the most wonderful way possible because it had been a dream of ours to do multidisciplinary projects. Our practice over the last five years has been expanding because we're not interested just in a mural, we're interested in the entire environment, we're interested in the arts, we're interested in making an impact and tapping into our extraordinary cultural community. So when James called me, I was like, oh my God, this cannot be for real. I literally jumped up and down for like five minutes because I was so excited. We're getting composers outside of the concert hall and into the community. The composer community in, in Philadelphia is pretty large and diverse, very diverse. I think it's larger than all the composers realize it is. It could be more close-knit, and I think uh, ACF Philadelphia has a role there that it can fill. It's good for the community to see that composers do much more than just write classical, classical contemporary music on score paper and then hand that music to musicians who then perform it in a concert. They do much more than that. They're using modern tools, electronics, and you know some abandon the score altogether. Some use audience participation in their music. So it's good to kind of break down the traditional barriers of what a composer is by definition, and then also uh, how they can impact a community. I mean, you wouldn't think a composer could come into your community and then help bring people together in a kind of uh, exploration of themselves and the community as a whole through music. Composers are a great uh, kind of great emissaries in bringing music to people who don't have much education in music or even uh, students of, of music. So I think it's important uh, for communities to get that experience from composers because they can share the creative process. It, it's a very intimate way of, of discovering what music creation is all about. What I love about the collection of murals um, that are part of the project with ACF is that they're very diverse and interesting and each community and each project has their own story. You know, I often think about the murals of Philadelphia and how in a, in a sense it's like the autobiography of our city. And I think it's wonderful because people want to be represented. They long for beauty in their lives but they also long for meaning. Every project that we do taps into the voice of the community in different ways. And so I love these three projects because they're incredibly different, because the constituents are different, and because they all in a way represent the citizens of the city. And I think that's what makes our work so important and wonderful and profound. We picked the uh, Henry Osawa Tanner Letters of Influence mural at uh, College Avenue. He says a haiku song, which is on uh, Christian and Broad, and also Southeast by Southeast, which is on 7th and Emily Streets. The communities around there were really vibrant uh, and different. I really love because we worked with Girard College and young people were involved in it and we worked with kids in our restorative justice program 
And that was really thrilling. I mean, for me to walk into the Youth Study Center and see kids talking about Tanner in a very serious way was fantastic. And we partnered with the Pennsylvania Academy of Fine Art and we met members of Tanner's family and we worked with the neighbors. So think about that. Here was this huge group of people whose paths had never connected from every walk of life coming together around the creation of something beautiful that really underscores the importance of this incredible, extraordinary artist. And I think it's a way of saying we as Philadelphians really appreciate his work and his legacy will live on publicly. The concept was Henry Tanner's life, his struggles, the reality of him becoming the first internationally renowned artist of color, and just sharing and educating with the population of Philadelphia, in particular youth that we were working in. His life story, his life works, trying to broaden kind of the, the known reality of, of him and his contribution to the historical fabric of this country, and just how pivotal he was. I really, really love his work. Uh, it's very peaceful. I love his colors. It, it's just, he's amazing. And I met the artist today that did this mural, and I, I think he's amazing too. <laughs> I was very inspired by this mural and by Tanner's life and by his beautiful paintings. I'm basically writing a piece that we can improvise on, trying to reflect the tumultuous lifestyle that Tanner had. So I'm writing something sort of intense, quicker tempo. It's going to be very open-ended with a lot of improv, but always working from what's on the page. It kind of starts out with more aggressive feeling, um, transitions into uh, more of a bluesy kind of um, minor, kind of somber type feel to it. And then like a revelation, going to a major key, very, very soft, the way his art was and, and the way his spirit seemed to be. I'm excited about it and I can't wait. <laughs> you know what's really fun about being a composer? You're you're a creator, a manipulator of, emo of human emotion. You can paint with sound how you want someone to feel, right? Or you can make it where they will make a feeling uh, upon themselves, right? But just composition, it, it digs deep into a core of humanity that a lot of arts can't get to. Music touches this nerve so deep inside all of us. It's hard to explain, it's hard to put into words, it's hard to put into images, because that is the incredible essence that is music. And so to be a composer, to be able to manipulate that space and to be a, be a part of that space where I am actually d digging inside you and touching some event, some feeling, something that you can't describe and you are moved by it, it's the most powerful feeling. The piece is composed for trumpet, French horn, trombone, and percussion. And the percussionist is using a snare drum, a cymbal, a triangle, and glockenspiel. So it's a very limited percussion. And I chose those instruments because of their brilliance, because they're so bright. And if something's breaking out of the blue, it should be brilliant. You know, it should be uh, scintillating. That's a good word for it. So I'm trying to create these sort of scintillating sounds. So it ends kind of with this big, happiness, let's say, for the lack of a better word. <laughs> Composition requires the community to be involved, and I think there's a kind of a bad name uh, in academic composition where it gets very, uh, almost like you're in an ivory tower, kind of conducting this very difficult, complex music, and you just expect people to play it for you. And for me, I don't approach composition that way. I think it really needs to be organic and that you're talking with your musicians, you're writing the music for your musicians, and that you yourself are still actively playing. And that's something that I'm very dedicated to. For my community outreach event, I came to Girard College to teach kids here about Balkan music with the West Philadelphia Orchestra. awesome opportunity to bring probably four different composers in you know for the kids to see and hear different uh, music different cultures and talk with them um, as well as even play along with the kids so it was it was an awesome experience for all of them and they re they're still talking about it now I think the kids took away a lot from it and even realized how much they actually hear on a day-to-day -day basis we have been talking about how music and art is all really just communication. That's what it is. And when you see a painting or you hear a piece of music, the artist or the composer was trying to tell you something. And it's partly your job to figure out what the message is. 
and they're all going to now be creators. They took a field trip on Monday to go see the mural. So they've seen it and we talked about how it made them feel and what they thought the mural was about. We've talked about Henry Ossawa Tanner and they are going to compose their own piece, a class piece based upon the mural as well. I've taught them that I'm composing a piece on the mural. So they are now going to compose a piece on the mural with their homemade instruments. Can I, what's the difference? Um, one is big and one is shorter. Good. One is really long and one is short. And how did that change the sound? Kian? The big one made a really loud sound, but the little one made a small sound. Good. Jaleen, what were you going to say? I'm going to say, because the um, short one, it just don't take a long, like a short time to take the um, ear out. And the long one, don't take a long time. Then it's going to make a loud, loud. Excellent. Very good. That's exactly right. Sonia Sanchez is like one of my mentors, one of my colleagues, somebody who inspires me endlessly. And Sonia came to us several years ago. She said, I want my legacy not just to be around my writing, but to be around peace. And she said, so I want to do something huge and I want to do it around haiku. So I'm like, Sonia Sanchez, you came to the right place. So Yolanda Wisher, our director of art and education, who's fantastic and also a poet, uh, we connected them. Together they came up with Pieces of Haiku Song, this major project, and we uh, worked with five sites, five of our art education sites, which is close to 100 young people. We worked with the church next door, Seventh-day Adventist Church. They were really excited. We worked with all the neighbors. So there were people all over the city who worked on this. And then this beautiful mural was created. The, the first thing that, that swept over me was, was a sense of magical realism, which I'm really into, you know, the, the fantastical. Mm. You know, uh, something that's realistic, but then larger than life and spins beyond that. I had never met Sonia, and from reading her poetry and her prose, I was really touched and moved, and I knew that she was for real. I've had the honor and pleasure of being with other artists of that caliber, and I know that my experience with those type of artists is that I'm usually really nervous, and then when I meet them, they put me at ease, and then they're just so cool. <laughs> mm -hmm. So that was similar to what happened to me tonight. Like, I was kind of nervous to meet her, and I didn't, you know, I was like, oh, probably I'll say something stupid. But um, it was just, you know, she's just so, she is who she is, and then, so I became very um, calm, and really, when I heard the music, I just was enjoying the music. So the first thing that stands out with the mural is really the, 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 the splash of colors across it and the juxtaposition of all these haiku uh, across it. And it's all these incredible um, artists, poets, musicians who are speaking out with this wall. So it's not just this visual thing, it's also like a verbal uh, and literate projection of what's taking place. My favorite haiku is here, the Alice Walker, the, the war is not the war is old, it has not become wise. It's good to kind of dwell in that, that dark spot right there because peace is also old. The piece that I'm writing um, has been a challenge to do because all of a sudden I'm faced with this now. I have to conceptualize this idea of peace, this mural, into something that, that I can bring to people. And uh, the way I found to do it was to think about the human experience as an instrument. So the piece builds off this idea of the general chaos that is the world because you know you look outside and if you had these giant ears that are listening to everything, it's going to sound like noise to you. But in, in certain spots and things like that, people are stepping up and shining. So each of the instruments will have a moment to, to kind of to shine for a moment and to, and to be heard in that. I found my writers, wrote them about the, the project and they welcomed me like with such open arms and the whole idea was doing a songwriting piece. Our mission at Mighty Writers is really simple. We teach kids to write, to think critically, and to figure out how to reach their goals. We just threw a bunch of stuff on the wall, just like everybody was yelling, this is peace, this is peace, this is peace. And we just collected it, and then we whittled it away to what was essential um, to our young audience, third through fifth graders. It was a special moment. It happened here, and now it's going to live and exist for a long time. I really wanted to work with uh, these three musicians, Tim Motzer, who was playing guitar, Max Gast, who played uh, Iwi, which is like an electronic saxophone, and Wes Rast, who was the percussionist. And all three of them I've played with before, 
but in the setting where we are accompanying for a modern dance class, what we do there is we just improvise for the class. Like we didn't talk about anything, we just play and it's all about listening. And so immediately when I wrote, before I wrote a note, I already knew I wanted to play it with those guys. Southeast by Southeast is such an extraordinary project. It was inspired by our work with the Office of Behavioral Health and Intellectual Disability Services. And we have this great program called the Porchlight Program. And in it, we use art to overcome stigma and to make people feel whole again. And so in this work, we always think, how do we move the needle more? How do we create more impact? And so we decided when Dr. Evans, the mental health commissioner, came to us and said, I want you to do a project with refugees and deal with issues around trauma and resilience, we decided to take over an empty storefront and turn it into a hub. And that's exactly what we've done at 7th and Dudley. And so we took over the space and we started offering social service programs. Then we started offering ESL, then sewing, cooking, dance, mural making, print making. And it's been there for two years and it is like, so exciting and out of that hub has emanated all these wonderful things. We've challenged people, we've inspired people, we've talked to people about what it's like to journey from another land, sometimes one that was war-torn and acclimate to a new country. And that is so sort of both traumatic and inspiring, it's both. The vision of the community center is to create programming, educational opportunities, that build on community assets and also um, create programming that organically evolves based on community needs. So if you need ESL, we have ESL. Art programming is really geared toward community stories, community skills, um, so we've had a wide variety of types of programs here. The story of the mural is the basic theme of people coming from um, somewhere else, coming from a mountain, coming into the city. And that's the overall theme that kind of relates to immigration in a broader sense. The space serves primarily Karen, who are from originally from Burma, then went to Thailand. Um, but the Karen people, the Chin people, the Bhutanese and Nepali people, that was the beginning mission. Um, currently, though, we serve a wider group of families. At this point, our, our programming is much more open after year three. Sadi by Sadi do a lot of things about the culture preservation for our community. So we encourage people to come here. And also myself, I try my best to be here sometime with them. I like site-specific work, and there was opportunity to use this mural as inspiration. So anytime I can sort of take my work outside of the theater or a normal venue, I, I get excited about it. I also work as a vocal coach, as a vo voice teacher. So I knew I wanted to do something with that in regards to the community outreach. So I reached out to Shira and Melissa and asked their advice about how to find people that were interested in learning about singing and that I would write a vocal piece for them. And on the very first day that I showed up, they, they had this girl, Tauntaun, there um, and recommended that I talk to her. And she said she wanted to learn how to sing and she wanted to learn how to write music. and wrote me this poem on the spot that became the lyrics for the first piece and that was when I decided that she should write all of the words and that I should try and just give her an opportunity for her voice to be heard. The music itself really comes again from from the two girls. They listen exclusively to pop music and in particular they really like K-pop which is stands for Korean pop which is a very produced very catchy um, kind of music and so I wanted to write something that sort of nodded to that so everything is is very melodic and will be performed with a drummer and a keyboard player um, so basically playing beats and synth lines and then they're gonna sing over top of it okay I, I look at it and I get inspired and then I, I use my laptop 
and I can use the, I can point and put notes that make the sounds of the new piece of the new music. And then if I want to get the whole song Uh, so that that's how I compose. I brought some instruments, and uh, we'll we'll try it together. We'll try it together. talked to Chuck and uh, he came a few times to my house we practice and uh, yeah we start the performance and uh, it's go really well. Are there any songs that you sing at this particular time of year at the fall time? Gahama low breathe low Verse 1 and chorus. That's a, pretty much the same verse 1 and 2 and 3. Thank you. you. Thank you. I really appreciate it. The tape part in this piece uh, is built from interviews with members of the community. So I was able to meet with them after the community project, interview them and ask them questions about what they love about music here in America, uh, some of their favorite songs from their you know, time here, and also some of their musical experiences from before they came to America. So my goal really is to use that either in a rhythmic sense or as the seed through a process uh, of synthesis that pulls it apart, blends it and sort of creates a drone sort of cloud of sound out of that. So really my goal will be to hopefully that the piece can connect all those different varying elements together. I like taking regular sounds and turning them into strange sounds. Turn this knob around. It's a couple of weeks away from the show, and today was the first day where I didn't have anything new to teach them, so we were just reviewing and that felt really good, um, and their headspace was really different. They weren't like trying to process a bunch of new things, they were just trying to get it down. It's about nature, and especially like the moon, the stars. Since we come to America, we're not really close, but we became close. I don't know how, but we came close. A fabric of their day-to-day -day is that um, they're not from here, and it's hard being here, and it's great being here. And um, then Sarasar started writing all this poetry, which embodied that too. It, it started talking about that as well. And um, so by I, I'm just excited to be able to give her an opportunity to speak those words, to s literally sing those words in front of people, and I think that will be amazingly empowering for her. This is a part of our Community Partners project, and every composer that's involved in this not only wrote music for this mural, but they reached out in the community to get to know the people around here and then teach them about music and composition. Uh, it was amazing. We kind of did some stuff with uh, found percussions that I was playing with. We had uh, 
fixed uh, amplified guitar, cello and clarinet. It's pretty awesome. I thought there were, there were all sorts of ways of interpreting those traditions and it was great to have the variety of composers. I thought that was really rich. I thought it was great as people walked by who just were like, what's going on? And then at the very end, a student that I've worked with read a story about coming to the U.S. and his experiences. And it was really nice that that was allowed too. And to me, that made it a really genuine really genuine mix. I think my English has improved because I can read, write, and speak better than last year. I am enjoying learning English. Thank you so much. It was just a very powerful day. Each composer worked with a different community and they'll talk about the music and how the mural inspired them. Good afternoon. We are so honored to be here today. beautiful Sonia Sanchez was there, both of the artists, everybody was really supportive. It was great to be with the other musicians and hear everyone's works and everyone supporting each other. <laughs> This is the third and final concert of the If You Could Hear These Walls project. It's art inspiring art, you know, ultimately. That to me is a success as a piece of artwork, you know. And to have work that ultimately inspires other artists is as amazing of a compliment as you can get, you know. And then to be able to see it depicted in a new medium, you know, that of music, to see that next stage of evolution and influence is, is really special and touching. If you want to bring people together, do it outdoors inside their community. That is a great way to get their attention and to make them feel like they can show up. There are no barriers, there are no walls, except for the wall with the mural. Calling it a project makes it sound like work, but it was so much fun. Art really has the power to change lives. It really does. I believe that. I think it's so important that we teach children that what they have to say, what they want to express, has value. It has value. And a really great way to express that is through art. You learn more than you think you ever would. And the personal connections can be very profound. Art always brings people together. We really want people to know that our work is not just about the paint on the wall. It's really 
about the transformation of communities, of neighborhoods, of individuals, of systems. And by extension, there's a huge impact on the civic life of the city of Philadelphia and that we've turned it into an outdoor museum, but one with a real social purpose. And so as we hear the work by the composers, as we hear the music, as we look at this image, what I want people to do is understand the breadth and depth of the work at the Mural Arts Program and that it's captured in this moment on the wall, it's captured in the music, and, it, and hopefully people will come back again and again and again and look at the art, not just as the paint, but as something that is clearly linked to igniting change. Thank you.